Intilac is the first of its kind aviation and travel incubator in the region. We have so much talent in the region. This incubator is region-based and is made to focus on solving problems in the region. That's something amazing. Every six months, we allow for new participants to enter the bootcamp. We then decide from the top 20 teams who will be the top four and will win 50,000 dirhams and will actually enter the accelerator program. And hopefully then they will start their companies and be on their way for success. Our idea has transformed fundamentally throughout and that was the result of people challenging us in the areas that needed to be challenged. Well, having that strong focus amongst themselves as team members is critical for success. It's been a week. hard work, yes. As a team, we, we really focus on the idea and make it become a real startup business. I always learn a lot when I'm in charge, so this is a, a learning day for me. We aim to easify and demystify the visa process. In Dubai, as we know, or as most people know, about 90% of the population is expats. So necessarily, a common denominator is everyone has had to go through the residency process, and majority of these people also have to deal with a visa process at some point in their life. In addition to the big kind of professional services industry, they have to deal with pro visa processes on a day-to-day -day basis. So, most of us here are UAE residents, so at some point in our lives we've had to deal with a confusing, annoying maze of trying to figure out what you need to do for your visa application. So what is our solution? One, to have a consolidated and updated and reliable source of everything you need to know about the visa application process. Two, to have a portal where you can upload things that don't change, like your, your passport, a scan of your passport, a scan of your visas, you input your information once into the system, and then that's information used to also populate your visa applications moving forward. And then three, to make sure you don't face the issue of wasting time and money going to VFS or Tessil to for your application to realize there's one document missing or you have the wrong license for your company. So we do a complete check of that. Why act now? Travel is among the highest points on an annual budget for many businesses. And regionally and globally, visa application fees, processes, requirements are changing. And now more than ever, because of globalization, because of dependency on, on travel for many businesses, this is having a direct impact on the bottom line of companies. So who exactly are we targeting? If you look at the UAE only in specific, we have 7.8 million expats, half of whom travel at least one per year for business. That gives us a potential market of 4.1 million people who could be interested in the product we're trying to offer. If Voyager captures just 2% of this market, that would give us 82,700 potential customers and considering, assuming a, a $30 per user per year, that would give us potential revenue of $2.5 million. So what exactly is the product we're trying to offer? So one, up-to-date information. Two, if certain companies, let's say Saudi right now, uh, is a big target market and you're interested in always being up to date, you can subscribe for like push notifications on everything that's happening for the Saudi, uh, let's say, visa requirements. Three, you'd store all your information there. You could have a big employee database. Use that information to auto-populate and automate up to 80% of the visa application. We do a completeness check to make sure you don't miss anything before you go. And then to keeping in mind the customer journey and making it really easy, having a one-click print and your entire, everything gets printed out, your travel tickets, your insurance, your company's trade license, etc. You take that as is with a checklist, confident that that's all you need to move forward. So we have a great product. How are we going to monetize this? So we want to start with businesses. The way we see it working is we target businesses that have a lot of staff that do a lot of traveling. In the medium term, we want to move to expanding the customer base. So what we do is go direct to user and offer a $5 per transaction charge rather than a subscription service. And in the long term, we aim to help governments realize the streamlining that's available in digitalizing the whole process. So that would reduce man hours on their side and it would significantly enhance the customer experience. Why? Uh, because the companies can improve this themselves, right? Mm -hmm. It's true that not all of them, they are, you know, they are not finding the right solution, but uh, mm -hmm. how do you compete with that? It is often more cost effective to just find a player who is doing this and doing it better than developing it in-house. But I mean, if we can offer them a solution at $30 per user per year, we would take up the cost of maintaining it rather than they have to do that. Yeah. So if everything is going to be in 
the cloud as you described it mm -hmm. and digitized yeah. and yeah. are you thinking about you know data privacy and security that would be i would say among our most critical investments to finding a good partner that can offer a strong cyber security because yeah. uh, we want to, we want people to be confident that whatever you upload and extremely personal information is there so yeah. that would not only be one of our top investments but top marketing tools to make sure people know that you know, information is there and safe. Yeah, I think that went really well. Actually, I think it was kind of energizing. You know, when you get into a room and you're, you're like on point, like you feel good about it. So the questions they have, we were able to answer and it felt like they were kind of nodding, nodding along the whole time. So I take that as a good sign that they like the idea. Um, the learning experience has been really great. Yeah. It really has. And the mentors have been fantastic throughout the whole thing. It's an existing problem. It's a huge pain huge point. Huge pain point. Huge pain point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The thing is, no, I like to, f I mean, if they want to focus there, but uh, it's not I think they can make new. money out of that, for sure. It's uh, a lot of people suffer from it. Enough people suffer from it, yeah, that they yeah, could probably definitely. have a good business. I personally feel all of this uh, complicated processes will get shaken up, you know, in the digital era with things like blockchain. So anything other than, you know, so they didn't mention any of that. It has, I think, a limited shelf life. We have a very simple idea. Uh, we'd like to make the life of expat people much better, giving them the chance to get access to local produce from their home, wherever they are. We want to connect regular travelers to the needs of people outside their home. I would like you to take five seconds of your time. Just remember the last time you asked a friend of you to bring you back something from your country to Dubai. And this is exactly what we are doing. We are developing the international demand for global product accessibility through a new marketplace of travelers. Our solution is very simple, a peer-to-peer -peer shipping platform. On one side, you have people who want product from outside, and on the other side, you have people in Dubai who would like to get access to this product. So our solution is accessible. Any product you have in mind for the three we took as example could be taken to Dubai, it's cheap, it's much cheaper to take something with you when you're traveling that get it cheap by DHL, and it's fast. Whatever you would like to get, you could receive it with the next person flying to Dubai. At this stage, the global shipping market is something around 189 billion dollars. Let's just focus on Dubai. 7.8 million expats living in Dubai. On every single transaction, we take 10%, and the price is based on the shipping. How much you're willing to get, to pay to get this product delivered to you with a minimum 10 dirham, which means like by September 2015, if you write on that, we could make an average of 100,000 dirham per month with 25,000 expense. This is like an auction. You say, this is what I want. This is what I can afford. Yeah. Who out there can travel and bring exactly. it? Exactly. How are you going to collect the money? The payment that is made uh, by a credit card transaction. So you, you know, you're blocking the amount that you're, you're paying and the, uh, the shipping fee that I, I will get to transport to you is going to be 100 dirhams. Uh, we're taking 10% commission on that. And you expect uh, both the people wanting the product shipped as well as the travelers to come to your platform and register their, register their travels, yeah? Um, the people that are traveling, that they will register, and you can imagine that they will register not just one flight, but uh, whatever programs that they have. And on the other side, when you have a need, well, it's very easy for you. You're looking for a way, and you just put your need. Oh, this stage, we're working in building this database of regular travelers. Mm -hmm. The chance we have in Dubai is like people usually travel regularly to the same countries. So we're building this one until we have enough people to open those countries to the application. <laughs> Help, of course. What else? The product is good, people are smart, so you're waiting for the final decision. I think the judges got the idea behind the product. They had a few questions which we clarified. We bring something that is innovative, that has no direct competition, so we'll stand out just by the product that we have. And I don't know, personally, I think, why should I carry a cake for anybody? I mean, like, it's, yeah. I don't know if there's an appetite. There's an appetite <laughs> to get. I don't know if there's an appetite to actually be the carrier. When Uber came up, or when Airbnb came up, would people have said the same thing? Why would I allow strangers to come into my apartment? It's a $30 billion company, right? Similarly, Uber, you know, why would I let anybody come into my car? I mean, I don't know this guy. Yeah, but then it's a $60 billion dollar company. So this, is a, this seems to be like one of those big, new, fresh issues, right? When I travel, can I get stuff for somebody else? Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. 
I think you're right that it's in the same space. I think the only thing is that the, the challenge with the type of goods and goods, there's like a lot of... Yeah. Interesting point. Very yeah. interesting. Yeah. IFCOM aims to, for travelers to make their journey stress-free from post, pre, on travel. Imagine that you are a user and you are planning to book a tri trip. So you have to research and do your research. It will lo take lots of time and headache. And after that, you will book your ticket uh, and then you, will ha you have to have visa requirements and you have to have hotel and like many things. MIFCOM will suggest top 10 countries and also will provide the user like visa requirements and also provide sample uh, papers uh, immigration. For the marketing, we, because our idea based on uh, Android application, we choose the technology to market. So we're gonna use a website, social media, because they are most affected, and we're gonna have printing materials inside the airports because we are only aiming for two things, which is uh, airport organizers and the user who take the trips. Our application combines all the servers, services for the customer. So like customer will have only like from his device, just check in our application and that's it. Our, our flow is going for the three parts, the developers. They will make for, for first part is uh, suggestions that user can ask question, whatever about the visa and everything, it's collect there. And uh, inspire me, which will be the offers and located and the duty free, what he can buy. For the process, we have travel companion, which will take the user from four stages. The green one it shows the checklist, what he has to pack up with him. Then the yellow phase is, is showing that to the way to the airport, can he make it? He cannot, what lifts, uh, what, how many minutes he has. Then the third stage was the map. For example, you choose Dubai International Airport map. He can choose where he can go, how much he minutes, can he have enough time in the duty free. The fourth uh, activity is scanning. He can scan the back tag and uh, ticket. So he, all the information will be there. So he doesn't need to keep any printing with him. The procedure is going from immigration to security check. And also if he's uh, f coming from transit, he also can use that. He knows how much minute he has, what he can do. You know, you, you kind of brushed over the fact that there's so much competition. This place is so full. Yes. There's Google, there is Airbnb, there is Booking.com, there is Hotel.com, Expedia, Priceline. How do you intend competing with these big players? They are focusing only like for hotel, booking hotel, booking hotel. For uh, like Emirates ticketing, only for tickets. Like we are combining all everything in our uh, in user hand, like in one application. So he won't have to like research here, then go to this app, then go to that app. Everything here it is provided for him. Also, we can reuse these uh, functions to another things. For example, we're having big malls, uh, global village. All of them need this kind of services. So it's not only about uh, airport, no. But for initially, yes, we will use the airport. Later on, we can do other things. Only one question they ask, like how are we competing with the other competitors? For the first time, I'm doing this and watching and judges, and they are looking to my idea. It's coming to real. Thanks, Antala. Oh. <laughs> travel experience or travel uh, aggregation like this is already a sussed out business model. And there's so many players in the market. Until you come up with something completely different, you know, as you said, yeah. maybe a social driven travel or something completely different, yeah. you don't stand a chance in this market. <laughs> the funding from a marketing point of view to stand out is just going to be huge. How do you curate all that content and yeah. from visas to immigration forms to... Yeah. Big ambition though, but very difficult to implement. Yeah. What we're trying to achieve is actually making the lives of passengers easier by eliminating one step throughout their travel, which is check in their baggage. The question which we are asking today is, why do we need to check in our baggages at the airport when we are traveling? And that's the big opportunity we are focusing on. The current centralized process is very cumbersome, both for airline as well as the passengers. So what we're offering is a decentralized solution, which means a smart car boot by which passengers check in their baggages at the doorstep in the taxi. 
So what the passenger has to do is reach the airport and walks in directly to the immigration and his baggages are taken care by the authorized porters or the chauffeurs and dropped in directly to the belt. So it increases the number of passengers which are traveling and checking in online. Airline gets a lot of forward visibility into the data which based on the research we have done is very important. They can plan their cargo better, they can plan their resources better and they can know how many passengers are going to travel by a flight much in advance. So our solution implements an Internet of Things technology where our AWS IoT cloud sits with the business logic in it and connected to it is the image baggage handling system, the mobile application the user uses to check in and this board that I have here with me that's attached to it the tag printer and the load sensor. According to the World Bank, 3.5 billion travelers internationally and domestically annually, 2.2 of them are Arab travelers, 2.2 billion are Arab travelers and OECD. Now, if we assume that 1 in 10 uses taxi to get to the airport and 10% would actually be interested to use our smart car boot idea, we are be we're left with $220 million if we charge them $10 extra for the service. So that's an untapped annual service, uh, serviceable uh, obtainable market. Revenue model, that's the holy grail. So how is the business uh, uh, earning money? Phase zero right now in the pilot stage. In, in phase one, we'll be targeting towards the chauffeur taxis or the airlines. In phase two, that's where the big money is. That's where the $220 million of market size is whereby we'll be uh, having a model whereby we charge $10 as a revenue from the combination of cost sharings from the airlines and from the passengers and probably from the, from the Uber taxis. Based on our research, and we had an extensive chat with Emirates Airline over the last one week, the right now it's spending around $6 to $8 per passenger to check in the baggages. Our devices cost $7,000 and the payback based on this calculation is actually lucratively less than one year. Subsequent to that, once like, uh, CapEx is recovered, the cost per is around two dollars, so your uh, airline actually saves around four dollars or on. This is a unique solution, a disruptive technology, decentralizes the whole baggage check-in process. We are at a stage whereby we can do a pilot in the next forty-five days and actually come to our solution in the next six months. Have you gone and checked that feasibility that the, you could actually get somebody else to drop my baggage? Is that something that you've checked or? Yes. Uh, so we have had a chat with Emirates. So there are two types of tags: active tags and passive tags. So the Emirates is working with an active tag. So if you have an authorized baggage handler who is actually an Emirates employee, so the liabilities can actually transfer from the boot directly to that employee. Now, right now we are targeting the business class passenger, that's where test case is. But in a, in a larger environment where we target your, your economy class passengers, there could be solutions like an automatic driveway, whereby baggage can directly be dropped onto the belt. But that's the vision part that we have. It went really well. I think our idea went through really well and they, uh, they really like it, I think. I hope. Yeah, we think they like it and we really wanted the, to, to really pass on the idea to them and they got convinced. So. It was perfect. I think they had some very relevant question to ask. So they got, the message was very clear and they actually saw the value in this as well. The baggage is one of the biggest issues for us, for airlines, for passengers, everyone. So anybody who cracks a baggage problem <laughs> is <Yeah>. definitely <laughs> close to our hearts. I mean. What I like about so, it is that it's thought through. Yeah, it's thought through, you know, so, so I don't think it's that far off to be able to do all of these through sensors. Yeah. Our technology is ready, yeah. the way you, I mean, you do the process. Yeah. We chose the boarding buzzer as the name of our solution because we want to solve problems for boarding passes in the airport. They can get lost, so we want to change them to boarding buzzers. I personally hate boarding passes. You have to put them in and out in the bag and it's such a hassle. You might say that people have boarding passes in their phones, but according to the research that we've done, 30% of the surveyed people actually had problems with the boarding uh, passes in their phones. It's actually a problem for the airlines as well that saving in one minute delay can save up to $50 million per year for major airlines. So what is the solution? Boarding buzzer. It's a wearable device that combines the three functions of a normal boarding pass, the uh, reminder on the, of the passenger that they have to proceed to their gate, and also the point of sale unit. So we looked at the total achievable market and how much profit we would make, and we found out that it would be around $706 billion in 2016. However, realistically, we had to focus only on the UAE-based airline industry. So we looked at Emirates Airlines, and they have around 52 million passengers in 2015. If we combine that with the number of passengers in other airlines, we have our target market set. We take an average-sized plane with around 180 passengers. If a plane leaves every four minutes, 
There are around 15 planes that depart. In 24 hours, we have around 65,000 passengers. So let's say we target 1% of those 65,000. We have around 650 passengers. We don't have any competition currently. We only have existing solutions that currently exist, such as the printed boarding pass and the e-ticket. However, we could have future competitors, which are technological companies that would be interested in our idea and have the resources to produce our product right now. Uh, when we were speaking to our professors in university, we were made aware that IBM would support us continuously in developing and producing the product. And we're looking forward for that if this happens. Did you think about you know, another hassle, another thing to carry in my wallet or in my hand, another thing to True. think about before traveling? Yes, you know? we would possibly change the shape and the size of our product. So an example is we would make a passport cover. Passport cover is attached to your passport, so you don't have to carry another device. It's already connected to your passport. So who are you selling the, the device directly to the end user? So yeah. Our initial idea is to make uh, to sell it to the airlines so the air airlines have it in their company. That means that uh, the passengers will return those uh, devices. So if I'm a frequent flyer of Emirates, I'm not keeping the device with me? No. No. There are actually two ways you can look at it, but we uh, think that more profitable and less costly will be providing to airlines and uh, for passengers to return it to the uh, airlines. <laughs> we did our best. Yeah. Yes. So, really. Really. Yes. so I can tell so now it's really. Yeah. I think the idea is valid, but it needs to, to be to integrated <coughs> into something that you're already <coughs> utilizing in your travel. Pain, right? pain, maybe. I mean the duty-free, having something, right? but something else, right? right? Just for the boarding, maybe it's... My only other thing is I've heard this so many times, when as soon as you say travel innovation, people say take a gadget. Well, in fact, in, a, in, <laughs> the, shift the needle, I mean, in theme parks, yeah. this is happening. Yeah. But in airport, it's, it's an airport, a theme park, so <laughs> just to board. But then, exactly, so can it do so much more? Exactly. exactly. Can it be so much exactly. more than that? And then yeah. you start from that bit and yeah. say, okay, keep going, and then you get to a smart Right. <laughs> can, it, can it become a boarding pass? Can it become my navigator? Can we... Uh, you are suddenly back to a smartphone. Yes. It's very interesting, but I don't honestly think that there's enough on it from what they've shared. Fantastic ideas. I mean, I was amazed with the quality of the 18 presenters. So they'll have to find some content, some context, some recipes, something else, which attracts people through that channel. 100% worth it. We have a good shot, but there's a lot of good ideas. I have to say that I'm very positively impressed. It's a great idea though, you know. It's a great. I think you have a good shot. One of the I, I won't say I'm relaxed. I'm in fact very anxious to hear the result. Yeah. I liked also the team. They were, were like, they were looking like very professional. We win, we believe. We're proud. I love the creativity. I loved rethinking the entire experience. Look at travel experience from a lens which has never been looked before because otherwise you, you cannot compete. And does that make them unique enough in a marketplace that is very competitive? A very big congratulations to everybody in this room for making it to the top 18 teams. It was a very close call. And so I would like to invite to the stage Storage Eye! Very excited, very happy. I had a feeling, but we're the fourth people. I was like, is it, is it not us? Is it us? <laughs> but, uh, but I believe that we were going to be one of them. This is just the start, so we have much more work to do. But we're excited about it. There are certain challenges ahead, and we need to start prep ourselves again and then start meeting with Emirates Airline next week and take it forward from there. The quality of the teams, the ideas that they have okay, they came up. Uh, I think we have had a little bit of everything. <laughs> There's so much promise. There's so much opportunity. The quality of the ideas, so it's always energizing. The wisdom of the crowds, you know, this whole idea of outliers, people away from your business, right, who come and give you these great thoughts. But that is what inspires me about today. You know.